Okay, my good friends, this is Roger Mud Fossil University. This is a call of desperation. I have just gotten this from a good friend. October 30th, 2019. This is November 3rd, 2019, several days later. A breakthrough in American energy dominance. U.S. Navy patents compact fusion reactor. Now, I've been trying to get people to pay attention to a compact fusion reactor for a long time, and I would like a patent attorney and somebody that wants to have some interest in developing this. I'm going to show you what their patent looks like, and let's go from there. Now, this is the heart of my interest it says before they said they they, they be, the u.s navy is close to figuring out in a patent filed by the u.s naval air warfare center however down here it says now before we get too excited it seems there's some skepticism about doubt has been cast whether or not this patent is even viable to begin with one of the reasons is due to the size of the device which is measured at 0.3 meters to two meters in diameter so that's 0.3 is kind of small two meters in diameter six feet ish it also uses conical dynamic fusers that spin at extremely high speeds versus the superconducting magnets found in more traditional fusion plants I understand what they're doing here, and they, they can do this. I don't think they're wrong. I think they have a good idea. However, I also have a good idea, and my idea is a little different than theirs, but it seems they want to cover everything there is under the sun. I'll show you their patent. All right, for years now, I've been talking about this Venturi Accelerator, and that is nothing more than a restriction. Now, I'm going to show you what they are showing in their pattern. I have to admit, I think this thing will work. What they're doing is they're going to have apparently hydrogen in here in a vacuum chamber, this heavy duty hydrogen coming in here. And um, then they're going to spin these things counter rotating against each other and forcing the, the and they have these cleaves creating wafting crushing impacts poom, poom, poom. and and then and, and they're making a plasma in the middle of it and they could make a little tiny one I just, I really think they're doing a good job here um, however there's so much that they want to cover I have also some ideas too but this is very I, I have no problem with this whatsoever I think this is going to work um, thermonuclear fusion reactors with magnetic or electric plasma confinement. Now, how are they confining this? I have no idea. Uh, that's the key. And they go on and make a lot of claims. Um, and these are the claims over here. What is claimed? Plasma compression fusion device comprising hollow linear duct having a vacuum chamber disposed within the hollow linear duct. Right, so, a tube with a vacuum chamber. One pair of opposing smoothly curved headed counterspinning conical structures disposed within the hollow linear duct that has these, this vacuum. Each are counter spinning conical structure having a plurality of orifices. So they're one spin they're they're counter rotating and they have a whole batch of orifices, so they're like slamming almost like propeller blades really. It's really is what it boils down to. Uh, but they're running at a hundred thousand RPM, so they you know, the propeller's not logical now and they are additionally electrically charged all right so you're going to have an impact which will be additional on top of what their normal molecular atomic influences they're charging it pumping it up so it's obviously going to slam harder
What you have to do to create plasma is slam something into something else, and the only thing that you're going to slam into is a, a electron to electron, because that's all there is, is electrons. And if you can flood the surface with electrons, flood the other surface with electrons, and then slam them together at 100,000 revolutions per second, or whatever it is, per minute, poof, you're going to have some serious impact of those, and that is going to drive these balls of stability, which are called protons, into this. And when they come back together, they will find their most comfortable stability, and that will be helium when you're working with heavy hydrogens. You got ones in there, they're big jobbers, they're laying around together, they're just having sort of a hard time staying together, and this, all of a sudden, you explode them, they go flying every different direction. When they come back, they make nice little balls called protons. Those protons come together called helium. All right. What's left over is all the electrons. Now, what do you do with them? How do you harvest them? You're going to have to have some kind of an electrode. All right. That's another issue. But what they're doing, I agree. I think they're right. I think they can do it. All right, I've been putting forward these ideas for years since I've been working with Rodney Warren on this accelerator. And this is all they're doing, only they're doing it in a different manner, uh, but it's creating the same output. All right. I think I deserve to have at least a, a voice at the table to speak about this. And I have, I've already got the design. I just never decided to put the design out because... I really need to talk to a patent attorney or something because somebody told me, oh, we're just going to keep talking about this and you're, you're being kind of a fool, which nobody's ever accused me of not being a fool. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, we, Rodney and I had work. We did work. Now, what are they showing for their plasma generator? I mean, can they make that thing do it? I'd like to see it. That's really what I want to do is see it. But I, I, I don't really care. I don't want to make any money. I don't care about any of this stuff. I just want it to be reality. I'd love to see this thing actually happen. That's what I want. That's all. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this. But my point here is that this is not about making money or anything like that. This is just I'm just concerned that this is going to go into the hands of... of of the U.S. Navy or whoever it is that says, oh, I own this stuff and nobody else can use it unless they get paid or they lock up the technology. I don't know what they're going to do. But they, that's the part that worries me. So, and I have ideas. I have some very good ideas that, are, you know, they're, they're, and they're different than theirs. But again, the, 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 the verbiage in there, when you look at the patent, says they own everything there is to do, and, and you know, they, they didn't state a hundred different things that could be, and they want all to coverage of all those as well, because they have implied it, but obviously never stated it. Well, that's nonsense. I need to have some attorney tell me what I can say that nobody can steal and, and, and say nobody else can use. That's what worries me. I'm not going to make anything on this. I'm not going to go out and have, develop this. But I can see what what can be done. And I don't want it in the hands of people that aren't going to do good with it. But I'm telling you, you could put this something just better. You could make one of these almost for your pocket. It's absolutely amazing what could be done here. And, um, you know, I give I, the Navy's fantastic for for looking at this. No question whatsoever. But... Do they own everything there ever is going to be about fusion? I don't think so. But that's that's another legal issue. Those are the kind of things that I have very, very little control over. But maybe somebody can contact me, Roger, with no D, R-O-G-E-R, at mudfossils.com. All right, thank you.